Okay, so in this problem, there is a pendulum, basically a mass hanging from a string. The mass is m, and it has some charge q. So this mass is free to oscillate back and forth as it hangs from the string. We want to find what the period of oscillation is. So let's look at this mass. We have a, when we displace it some angle from the vertical, there's an electric field everywhere. The electric field is pointing downward. So the total force going down is the gravitational force plus the electric force. That's the total force pulling the mass down. Okay, so now let's let's look at the if this is a total force pulling the mass down, mg plus QE, then mg times QE times the sine of the angle is a component of the force that makes it swing in the clockwise direction. So the total torque acting on the mass is just this force that makes it swing clockwise times the length of the string. So that's the total torque acting on the mass. And that's equal to I times the alpha, the angular acceleration. So this is the, the main equation that we need. I is just ml squared. So once we have this equation, we're basically done with the problem because let's, let's just write down this equation more neatly. So, so this is the equation we have. That's the total torque acting on the mass. And that's equal to I alpha. Okay, so we're told that the angle is small. It's only small displacements from the vertical. So the sine of the angle is almost equal to the angle. So now the equation becomes this equation. All right, so this is the equation of a simple harmonic oscillator in which this term right here is omega squared. That's the angular frequency squared. So if we know what omega squared is, we can find out what the period of oscillation is because well, omega squared is given by this. And now, well, of course, omega is just the square root of that. So we just take the square root of that and we have omega. And the period of oscillation is just 2 pi divided by omega. So we just write this down, 2 pi divided by what we have for omega. And we know these numbers, the problem gives us what the mass is, the length of the string, the charge, and the electric field. So we, we plug these numbers in and we find what the period of oscillation is. So it's given by this. Mass is 1 times 10 to the minus 3, the length is 0 0.5, we plug in the numbers on the denominator too. And we just calculate let's take the square root of that. So what, what does this give us once we do all these multiplications? It's 0 0.307 seconds. So that's the period of oscillation. So now what if we neglect gravity? If gravity is zero? Well if gravity is zero, then the period of oscillation becomes this, we just, we just take g equal to 0, it becomes this number, so it's 0.314 seconds. Okay, so it's, these numbers are slightly different. When we take gravity into account, or when we set g equals to 0, the numbers are slightly different. How big of a difference is there between these numbers? It's a 2.28% difference. So, so gravity does play a significant role, we have to take it into account.